welcome back to the channel. Got a new deck tech for you here today, Jinkataxius, the new Praetor from March of the Machine. He is one of the five Praetors that got reprinted in different styles, all of them having enchantment sagas. Wanted to bring this one to you before March of the Machine became old news, and I wanted to show you how potent my list has been. It has taken games. Literally has not lost a game yet, and I've played quite a few. So let me get into it here. Let's start off with the commander. Jinkataxius, three and double blue for a five five with war two. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell with converted mana cost, three or greater, draw a card, three and a blue, flip him in, transform him only if you have seven or more cards in hand. Flips into the Great Synthesis, an enchantment saga with three chapters. Chapter one, draw cards equal to the number of cards in your hand. You have no maximum hand size for as long as you control this. Uh, chapter two, return all non-Phyrexian creatures to your owner's hands. Chapter three, you may cast any number of spells from your hand without paying their mana costs. Then you flip them back on the front. So that is crazy good. We're going to be drawing cards with Jin out, getting up to seven cards, and then flipping them to draw more cards, bouncing the board, and then winning the game with that omniscience. That is going to be our game plan. We're going to want to get Jin out early so we can flip him fast and end the game, not giving our opponents a single chance to do anything about it. All right. Early game here, we got cantrips. We're running all the good one mana cantrips. We got Kataxian Probe, which is technically zero mana, letting us draw a card and look at someone's hand. Ponder, look at the top three, put them back. You may shuffle, draw a card. Op scry one, draw a card, but at instant speed. And we also have Serum Visions, which draws us a card in the scries two, and Preordain, which is scry two, draw a card. All these are going to be essential for our early game, helping us find our ramp, help us find our extra turns and our counter spells. That is imperative to helping us win in the game hopefully by turn five or six that's what we're trying to go for here we got our ramp package mana crypt jeweled lotus soul ring mana vault and sapphire medallion are going to be the most essential pieces here any of these in your opening hand are going to be godsends we also have a uh, felwar stone in our list thought vessel and decanter of endless water all three of those are additional ramp pieces that will uh, either make us blue mana or give us no maximum hand size or in the case of decanter also drawing us a card when jane cataxius is out all right mid game time we got our extra turns i just put the five mana ones here we're also running walk the aeons as well as nexus of fate and temporal mastery in addition to the delve one temporal trespass all of these will help us in two ways in the mid game they're going to help us draw cards and filter through our deck because we're going to get an extra turn and get a free draw off of Jin, which will allow us to cast some of these on the right hand side of the screen here. Factor Fiction, great card advantage. Most of the time you're just going to take the pile with the most cards in it over the one card or two cards they set on the side there that might be better. Depending on how many cards you have in hand, you're just going to want to get up to seven cards with this. Flow of Knowledge, draw a card for each island you control and then discard two cards. You're going to be drawing an extra card off of Jin with that too. Amazing, amazing card. You're able to hold up counter spells. And and if they don't play anything, you're going to drop these just to get that seven cards in hand. Mystic Confluence, great modal spell for this deck. Being able to bounce creatures, mana drain, uh, not mana drain, mana leak something or draw cards. Most of the time we're going to be drawing cards or countering with this. Also getting an extra draw off of Jin, I should mention. All right, on to the counter spells. Soul Reed is up first. Three and a blue instant. Choose one counter target spell unless this controller pays four or draw two cards. This one is particularly good in this deck because if we have Jin out, we're either going to counter something and then the counter spell is going to replace itself because it is four mana or we're going to draw three with it depending on the board state. If we don't see anything we want to counter, easy. Draw three cards, flip Jin on the next turn. Unwind, another great one. Free quote unquote counter spell. Counters a non creature spell, untap up to three lands, replace itself with Jin. Same with Rewind, 4 mana, counter spell, untap up to 4 lands. Also getting that draw off of Jin. Cryptic Command here. 3 blue and a generic for an instant. Counter target spell, return a permanent to its owner's hand. Tap all creatures your opponents control or draw a card. Uh, this one in particular is actually pretty good because of the modes that it 
it offers and getting that extra draw off of Jin is always nice. So it's already replacing itself so you don't feel obligated to get your card back with the card draw. If there's something that really needs to be balanced or you need to stop an all out swing on you, Cryptic Command will do that for you. Archmage's Charm, Triple Blue, Counter a Spell, Target Player Draws Two Cards, or Gain Control of Target Non-Land Permanent with Converted Mana Cost, One or Less. That third mode, probably not going to get used very often, but it is there. Most of the time we're going to be countering a spell, replacing the card with Jin or drawing three if no one casts any spells. And lastly, we got our free counter spells. Just wanted to showcase these three in particular, Force Negation, Fierce Guardianship, and Force of Will. Force of Will and Force Negation will net you negative one card instead of negative two, and Fierce Guardianship net zero. Insane. Let's move on to our proliferation effects. Proliferate is extremely important in this deck. It will allow us to get that third Saga counter onto Jin to get that Omniscience effect to win the game. As you can imagine, we want to get to that as fast as possible. We got a few cards here I want to showcase for proliferation effects. First up, Experimental Augury, a two mana instant Look at the top three, put one in your hand and the rest on the bottom in any order, proliferate. Good in the early game to filter out our draws and in the late game to get us that saga counter that we need. Karn's Bastion, proliferation on the land, what more do I need to say? That is crazy good in this deck. Tezzeret's Gambit, three and a Phyrexian Blue. Draw two, then proliferate. This can be played just like Experimental Augury earlier on when Jin's out to draw three cards to get us to flip him. Same with Study Progress, three mana, essentially draw two, proliferate if we had Jin out. If he's flipped, then we get that Saga counter. And then lastly, we got Staff of Completion, three generic for an artifact. Tap, pay one life, destroy target permanent you own. Pay two life, tap, add a mana. Pay three life, tap, proliferate. Pay four life, tap, draw a card, and pay five, colon, untap. So, this one is going to be crazy for all the modes except for the pay one life mode. It is a mana rock for us for paying two life. Pay three life the proliferation which is the most important effect on it and then pay four life just in case we need to get to seven cards. It is there for us. Let's move on to our game enders here. This is what we're going to be casting once we resolve our third chapter on Jin. First up we got actual omniscience. If we just land this, our opponents are probably going to scoop in addition to the other things that we drop here. We got all the titans here, Ulamog, Ceaseless Hunger, Kozluk, Butcher of Truth, and Ulamog, Infinite Gyre. I chose these three in particular over any of the other ones because they have cast effects and either Annihilator or, in the case of Ulamog, Ceaseless Hunger, ability to mill our opponents out, Blight Steel to infect, kill people. And keep in mind guys, with the extra turns here, any of these beaters that hit it for two or three turns I think is going to make people scoop. We got both of the other Jinkataxiuses mostly just for flavor but they are good if you get them down. Drawing seven with Jin and then making each opponent's maximum hand size reduced by seven is crazy good. Don't need to tell you that. And copying the first artifact instant or sorcery spell is pretty good too when we have extra turns. Uh, not to mention countering the first artifact instant or sorcery our opponents cast. Next up we had Monomic Deluge. Exile target instant or sorcery card for a graveyard copy that card three times and then you may cast the copies without paying their mana cost exile this so this one's going to be crazy good because we exile an, instant or, an extra turn in our graveyard draw off the cast of monomic deluge with a uh, gin flipped back draw off the three copies so that's draw four take three extra turns crazy crazy good that's probably just gonna make our opponent scoop time stretch target opponent takes two extra turns if we exile that with monomic deluge I'm sure that they're going to concede. Expropriate, we all know it. Expropriate's not a nice card, but it will help us uh, make our opponents pick up their cards. So vote for time or money, get extra turns, or steal permanence from people. No lose-lose on that one. Both the modes are good for you. Lastly, guys, I wanted to get into some notable utility lands. Just wanted to go over these real quick before I conclude the deck tech here. Mystic Sanctuary going to be very important. We are running fetch lands to be able to fetch this out when it enters the battlefield untapped you may put target instant or sorcery from your graveyard on top of your library. You just need three islands to have it come in untapped. So you just put an extra turn on top. Perfect, perfect, perfect for casting an extra turn, going to your extra turn, playing this, put the extra turn on top, play another extra turn, draw onto that extra turn. Perfect, perfect sequencing there. 
this land has uh, done so much for me. Reliquary Tower, obviously we're going to be drawing a metric ton of cards. We're gonna want that. Karns Bastion, as I prefaced earlier, proliferate insanely good. And then our channel land, Otawara Soaring City, being able to, on a triggered ability, bounce any non-land permanent at instant speed is going to be perfect for this deck. Since we are a little light on hard removal once stuff has landed, this is going to be a excellent land slot here. And that'll do it. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate all of you for watching to the end. If you guys have any suggestions for the deck, I will be happy to hear them. I'll put the deck list in the description for you guys. Any commander decks you want me to build next time, feel free to voice them also in the comments. I'd be happy to uh, show you guys some of my knowledge here as I make more videos on my deck build. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment, do all that fun stuff, and I will see you guys later. Bye for now.